Welcome to worship for Lebanon Lutheran Church, Whitehall, Michigan. This is our worship for the first week in the Advent season. It is the commemoration of St. Andrew, November 30th, um, every year one of Jesus' disciples. The Advent wreath traditionally marks and counts the Sundays in the Advent season. The color has been historically purple to emphasize a time of confession and repentance prior to the birth of Christ. However, more recently, the color has been blue to emphasize hope and longing in the season before the birth of Christ, with one Sunday being pink or rose-colored because it is a Sunday to emphasize Mary, but also a Sunday to lighten up the third Sunday in the Advent season, to lighten up and remember to be joyful, even funny, in the days leading up to the birth of Christ. So much joy overflows in the assembly. So let's begin with prayer. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Above the clamor of our violence, your word of truth resounds. Over nations enshrouded in despair, your justice dawns. Grant to all your household a spirit, a watchful eye, to perceive the hour in which we live. Hasten the advent of that day when the weapons of war shall be banished, the deeds of darkness cast off, all your scattered children gathered into one home. We ask this through him whose coming is certain, whose day draws near, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. This is a reading from Isaiah 64. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for you. You meet those who gladly do right and those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are as a father to us. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Hi, friends. This story is called be ready. Jesus was walking in Jerusalem with his disciples when one of them pointed at a tower of heavy stones being used to build a temple. Look, the disciple said, what huge stones, what large buildings. Jesus stopped and said, you see these big towers of stone? Someday all these stones will fall down not one of them will remain standing. Peter and the other disciples were confused. The temple wasn't even finished yet. What would make it fall down? They began to worry. When will this happen? Peter asked Jesus. Jesus paused and smiled kindly at his friends. Don't be afraid, Jesus said. Watch and wait. Be ready. Even when scary things happen, God is working for good. 
Jesus told them this to comfort them. Jesus knew that trouble was coming. Soon, Jesus would die on the cross. So I wanted to share a story um, from over the summer at day camp. We were teaching the song Sanctuary, and a couple of my little friends said, oh, Miss Allie, Miss Allie, what is a sanctuary? And so I opened it up, and I said, well, what do you guys think? What is a sanctuary? And one of my friends said, a sanctuary is a safe place that you can go. And I was like, yeah, that's, yeah, you got it. A sanctuary like this place is a safe place that you can go. And the words in this song say, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. And I said to my kiddos, hey, what, what do you think that means? How can I be a sanctuary? And so my friends, they said, hmm, well, I can be a safe place. My friends can come to me and I can be kind and I can be nice to them when they're having a bad day. I was like, yes, you've got it. You're on the right track. You've totally got this. And another one of my friends raised her hand and she said, and I can, I can wear a mask and I can stay home and I can stay distant and that would be safe. So I just wanted to share that with you before we sing Sanctuary. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, waken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus said, But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will be falling in the heavens and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Humanity coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels to gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and it puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the Son of Humanity is near, at the gate. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. 
But of that day and of that hour no one knows, neither the angels nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a long journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with their own work, and, and orders the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore be alert, for you do not know when the householder will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Back in 2002, I listened as a self-proclaimed scientist. This was back in the days when calling oneself a scientist tended to lend credibility. A self-proclaimed scientist warned of pending doom. On May 13th, 2003, he predicted an unknown planet X would pass between the Earth and the Sun. As referenced in the Gospel of Mark, he declared, the Sun will be darkened and the Moon will not give its light. Within an hour, he said, there would be earthquakes and tidal waves and coastal cities would be plunged into the sea. Temperatures would drop and the power and technology grids would fail. And those of us who survived would find ourselves facing a return to 19th century living. This so-called scientist warned that the best way we could prepare is to go camping. I smile as I recall it because it turned out to be such silliness. Even as I smile at the silliness that the church proclaims for four weeks every year. Advent. This wonderful season of wreaths and candles and calendars is the church's annual announcement that the world will indeed end. But the world will not end with some kind of cosmic calamity. The earth will end with the coming of the Son of Humanity. Jesus will return. And even as we make this annual Advent announcement, it feels kind of silly, and we smile, because the church has been waiting for 2,000 years, and Jesus has yet to show up. And so we soften the Advent announcement. We count down the days to Christmas when Jesus will come anew in our hearts. And yet look at the world around us. 2020 would be a really good Advent for Jesus to show up. All around us are fears, if not signs, that the world as we knew it was passing away. I got to tell you, I cannot keep up with the numbers. Uh, 12 million Americans have been diagnosed with COVID. Um, 156,000 across our country today. As one doctor said, we set a record every day and we break it tomorrow. 
Some models predict that there will be 439,000 deaths in our country by March 1st. The economy is crashing. Thanksgiving was quiet, and Christmas does not appear to be any different. And as I hear Jesus talk of the sun being darkened and the moon uh, not giving its light and um, talk of earthquakes and tidal waves and all that stuff, it doesn't seem to me um, about to, a planet X, but the consequences of climate change. And so um, I think we all know that there is fears, if not outright signs, that the world as we knew it is passing away. So it would be a really good advent um, for Jesus to show up. And that's what makes this silly Advent announcement powerful good news. That indeed the world as we knew it is passing away. But it will not end um, by politics or a pandemic or climate change. Not that we can ignore these things, but by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that the Jesus who comes at the end of time has more in mind than ending things. Jesus ends the old. Jesus ends what is passing away in order to bring something new. After all, isn't that what God has always done? End the old to bring something new. We see it in creation. The flood. Israel passing through the sea to the land of promise. The waiting for the Messiah the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. The waiting for Jesus to return. Paul's ministry to the Gentiles. The Reformation. A church moving toward addressing social issues. Jesus ends what is old in order to bring something new. The gospel points out to the fact that the decisive moment when Jesus came suddenly to end the old and to bring something new is the cross. The cross and resurrection of Jesus. In his, in his prophecy, in his prediction, Jesus alludes to the master of the house coming. We don't know when he will come suddenly, whether it's in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow, or at daybreak. And we are reminded in the way that Jesus came to us at all those times. In the evening, on the last evening before his death, Jesus offered bread and wine and interpreted the cross as the new covenant in his body and blood. And Jesus promised that we would eat and drink with him in the kingdom of God in the evening. It was at midnight uh, that Jesus was arrested in the garden. It is at midnight that Jesus was betrayed handed over. And yet Jesus remained faithful to the very ones who betray him, who handed him over, who bound him and take him away. It was a cockcrow that Jesus was denied. 
And yet Jesus remains faithful to all of us who in thought, word, and deed deny him. And as it was dawn, Jesus was beat and mocked and sentenced to death, and a cross was laid upon him. And he went to Golgotha and suffered and died. And it was at dawn on the third day that the women went to the tomb and found it empty. And we are in Mark, who tells us that the women fled from the tomb from terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid because they knew everything had changed, I believe. And Jesus himself, risen from the dead, was the sign that the master of the house had come suddenly, that the old had passed away, and that God in Christ was beginning something new. The cross is the moment when the master of the house comes and ends the old and begins something new. And we live in between that moment and the moment when Jesus will come in all power and glory and will bring God's newness all in all. When he will send out the angels and gather the elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. And so we can decide um, that the signs that things are passing away can be things to be afraid of, or we can by faith look to them as signs that Jesus is beginning something new. And more than that, uh, we can cultivate signs in this Advent season that God in Christ is beginning something new. In my first year in seminary, um, my group was responsible for worship um, in the first for the first Sunday in Advent, and our advisor, Dr. Art Becker, came in that Monday morning for morning prayer with armloads of pine boughs he had cut from trees on his property. And he instructed us to put them all over the small chapel at Trinity Seminary so that when people came in, they smelled the pine. You know, we all know that the biggest memories are of, are come through our, our smelling. You know, you smell the, the right cup of coffee or the right cinnamon roll or the right pine branch or the right candle, and it takes us somewhere else. Mm, I can still remember the pine in that chapel. It was more than the coming of Christmas, <laughs> the coming of finals. It was a smell of God's coming. We can do that. We can light the candles on our Advent wreaths and be mindful of the coming of the light of Christ that will dispel all darkness the darkness of isolation, the darkness of grief, the darkness of sickness, the darkness of death, the darkness of um, political upheaval, the darkness of waiting. We can light candles and be mindful that God is and will dispel the darkness. And we can get our Advent calendars they make all kind. Chocolate I've seen on the internet, beer and wine, they make all kind. We can pair them with Bible verses and count down the days. And be mindful that, that uh, more than getting nearer to Christmas, we are getting nearer to the day when Jesus will come and fulfill God's kingdom all and all. Advent is the announcement that the world will not end with a cosmic calamity, no planet X, but with the coming of this, the Son of Humanity, 
And so we can wait expectantly. We can be graced by the discipline of remaining alert, remaining awake to the signs that God is doing something new. For Jesus will come and end the old. But more important, Jesus will begin something new. Have a blessed Advent journey. Peace be with you. Amen. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright, for your word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation.
prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said,
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. Our Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may God watch between me and thee while we are absent from one another.